Thank you, Luann, for a sweet and to the point. We're going to start our series today on this first Sunday of Lent. Start our series on spiritual discipline. And just a couple of words to begin. Uh, first of all, we're going to be going through the next seven Sundays up through Easter, talking about nine different spiritual disciplines. I don't want to overwhelm you, I want to remind you that these are all tools, as we talked about in school. These are tools that God has given to us to help us grow in our relationship with God. And we don't always use all the tools in the toolbox. We use the tools that are most useful to us. So as we go through this whole series, be mindful that we're not dumping everything on you and saying you should be doing all of this. But we're saying here are some tools, here are some ways that, that, um, that you can deepen, go deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ. I did mention also that each of these tools is a tool that Jesus used. So it's not as though we're digging things up that didn't exist. These are all, every one of them will be able to find a scripture that relates to Jesus in some way, such as today. And we're going to talk first of all a little bit about the background of fasting. Now that's, we might as well get that one out of the way right away. Uh, that's, a, that's a discipline that um, has been a part of our tradition. Going back to the almost the beginning of time. And yet it's a discipline that uh, pretty much gone by the wayside. So we're going to talk a little bit about the fasting today. We're going to give you a little background on where it comes from. We're going to talk about the whys, why, why we would fast. And then we're going to talk about some of the how-tos. But I want to give you just a little background, a little brief background to start with. As I mentioned, we go almost back to the beginning of time. And fasting has been a part of almost every spiritual movement. But if we go back to the Old Testament, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because there are so many stories. If you get a concordance out and you find the word fast or fasting and look up all the Old Testament references of fasting, it, 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 they're innumerable. Um, Moses fasted on Mount Sinai. Uh, Within the law, there were days set aside when the Israelites were required to fast. And there were times when the prophets would beseech the people to put on sackcloth and ashes and, and to pray and fast because of their sins or because of some national calamity that was about to befall them. And so there, there, there's all kinds of instances in the Old Testament that refer to this spiritual discipline of fasting. So, also in the New Testament, Jesus fasted. We talked about that last week, the 40 days in the wilderness. Paul fasted after his experience on the Damascus Road. He went without food or drink for three days, we're told. And, and Jesus talked about fasting. He talked about, they came to him one time and said, um, how come your disciples don't fast? John the Baptist's disciples fast. The, Pharisees, the disciples of the Pharisees fast. Why don't your disciples fast? And, and Jesus said, there will come a time when my followers will also fast. Not while I'm with them. While the bridegroom is here, you don't fast. But there will come a time when my followers also will fast. And then the other thing I want to point out is the scripture that was read today, where Jesus talks about fasting in the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, and whenever you fast, and that's the important part right there. The question isn't if you fast, Jesus says when you fast. Jesus assumed fasting, not as an option, but he said when you do it. It's interesting. Throughout the history of the church, there has been an emphasis upon fasting. We we'll talked again about that last week especially in reference to Lent, but there's, there's been a tradition within the Christian church from the very first days of the church that times were set aside for fasting. By the time of John Wesley, the tradition of the church was that uh, he would fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays because that was the day of betrayal, according to the Gospel of John, and Fridays because that was the day of the crucifixion. Not just during Lent, but throughout the whole year. People would choose to fast on those days. What that fast entailed, by the way, was going without food until evening. So it was just a 24-hour fast. 
people would eat on what, um, Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, and they would go and they would not eat again until Wednesday night or Friday night. Not everyone practiced those fasts. John, John Wesley, in his lifetime, always practiced the Friday fast throughout his life. And there was a 13-year period where he fasted on Wednesdays, but he didn't always do that. But he did expect his followers to eat. We're told that he required his preachers to fast on a regular basis. Not specifically when or how to do that, but he required his preachers to fast. He, he, it was supposedly said by him that you cannot rule your, if you cannot rule your belly, you cannot rule the church. But also he went further than that and he made statements to the entire, uh, all those who followed him in the Methodist movement. For all church members in the general rules of the Methodist church, he said, it is expected of all who desire to continue in these societies, the Methodist societies, that they should continue to evidence their desire of salvation by, and he lists a number of things, ending with fasting and abstinence. So, Tom Wesley, fasting was, was considered a, an important part of the church. Now, Wesley also made a couple of things. He cautioned against extreme fasting, and he also mentioned that there are those who, because of fragile health, should not fast. So there are exceptions to it. We'll talk more about that when we get into the particulars in a little bit. But I thought it would be interesting today. I put on a appeal a couple weeks ago and asked people if you ever fast let me know about your experiences. And I thought it would be interesting for you here today to hear of some other people. I know if I talk about fasting, you say, well, I'm a preacher, you know. Preachers and uh, super, super uh, spiritual people fast. Uh, no, I didn't say preachers are super spiritual. This is preachers and super spiritual people. They fast. So, okay, that, you know, you, you understand. But no, fasting is, is a possibility for everyone. So I've asked a couple of persons that they would just share a little bit about their experience in fasting. So I'm going to ask Mike Gardner, if he comes up, he's going to share. I know he's a pastor too, so he's super spiritual, but um, we'll get to the common lay folks in just a moment. But Mike is going to share a little bit about his experience with the discipline of fasting. Now, one of my first experiences with fasting uh, occurred as a uh, pastor in the East Michigan Conference, we were uh, studying Whitney and the spiritual disciplines, and we came across this whole idea of fasting. Um, so we decided what we would do is we would go 40 days um, for fasting during Lent. And uh, so I gave up uh, breakfast, and uh, what we did, though, was we wanted to say, okay, so there's not going to be a starvation diet here, so what, what do we do? What's true fasting? So what I did was instead of eating breakfast, I would spend an extra hour doing my devotions and then go for a walk. And I found that to be a very uh, spiritual time of blessing for me as I did that. Um, and it became a discipline in my life so that when Lent was over on Easter Sunday, I continued to follow that practice that I had developed even into June or July. So it was a good jump start for me. I kind of look forward to Lent now because that is one of the traditional fasts that I would do beginning of Lent is to just give up breakfast and just spend that time in prayer and walking around, which is awfully hard to do because I've got Barb and Carol has great cooks there and they make great breakfast at uh, Troitus. It's hard to do that when you smell all that food coming up. But uh, so that's one of the things that I've done with fasting. Fasting doesn't have to be reserved uh, just for food. Uh, also, one of the other things we wanted to do is we wanted to give up something. So uh, me being a uh, great uh, basketball fanatic, I gave up TV. And then I realized I gave up TV during Marriage Madness. And, and that was extremely difficult for me. And, and I thought it was a special favor to the God that uh, Easter fell on Sunday and the final uh, game fell on Monday. So I got to watch UCLA win. Um, it was also a that won the office pool, too. Uh, figure. Uh, but also, fasting doesn't have to be just during Lent as well. What I found was that there were times in my life, as the Bible commands, when in the Old Testament, they wanted special direction. They wanted to uh, have a special anointing of God. They would call for a fast. And so there have been times in my life where I just felt that I needed God's direction, that I needed God's peace. And so I would go on 48 hour fast. And what I do is I tell my close friends, I would say, okay, so I'm going to go fast and I'm going to pray. Here's what I'm praying about. Will you covenant to pray with me during that time? And while I have gone through a, quite a bit during those uh, five years, um, you know, God richly blessed those times. He gave me direction and he gave me understanding and he gave me peace that uh, most people wouldn't be able to understand. 
But uh, I knew that that peace and comfort came directly from God, and I believe it's a direct result of fasting as well. So fasting is, is a very important now part of my life. This is something that I uh, implement as much as I can. Um, even this time through, uh, I've decided to uh, fast during uh, this time of Lent, so I'm doing the whole breakfast thing. But uh, I've decided to uh, go on Facebook. Because uh, to me, Facebook is, it can be very depressing when I'm looking at Facebook. So I've decided to uh, give up Facebook and put, uh, put that in God's hands and, and hopefully be praying that uh, uh, blessings on my family as I, instead of uh, worrying about them about Facebook. So those are some of the things that I have with, uh, with fasting. Again, it's a, it's a very important discipline, one that I hope that you all will be able to partake in. Thank you, Mike. And uh, Jeff Dean is going to share a few words. Morning. Morning. So when I got an email from Pastor Rick and he asked me if I'd be willing to do this, I was like, well, I don't have a lot of experience. I'm certainly not an expert. He goes, that's what I'm looking for, somebody normal. I was like, well, I'm glad that I can be considered normal because I do really like to eat. <laughs> I actually, um, many of you know that I grew up Catholic, and uh, so my experience growing up was this not eating meat on Fridays, and that's what pretty much my whole experience with fasting was, and as I grew up and I kind of watched how that worked for most people that I observed, not all, but most people that I observed was, it didn't really seem like much of a sacrifice to me because they'd go to Red Lobster and have dinner and you know, eat seafood and have this, and, it, it, and it, so I ask myself continually, why? Why do people do that? What is it that they're getting out of that in that situation? Um, and, and so basically, I think growing up, I kind of decided it was silly, that it just didn't really have any role for me in life, and that it was a silly experience, and I had no need to do it. Uh, and then last year, and I think as I've grown a little bit more spiritually, I, I started kind of reflecting on it a little bit and realizing that, gosh, there's a lot of examples in the Bible about this. And I had some friends that did these uh, fasts during Lent, uh, a 40-day fast of really no solid food. They do a shake in the morning, and it's a specific uh, type of shake that provides a lot of nutrients throughout the day, and they do not eat anything else. Uh, besides fluid for 40 days. And, and I watched these things around. I was like, what's the purpose of this? You know, what are people getting out of it? Why? I asked myself the why. And I think we need to know the why sometimes in, in why we do things. And so last year I was going through some really difficult uh, time, personal times and some times in my faith. And uh, I needed to do something to uh, break some bad habits, as I would call it, uh, and form some better habits. So I decided that I would, uh, for a month, I just came up with an arbitrary number of a month, that I would not eat anything until uh, 5 p.m., so evening. Uh, and I did that for 30 days. And my real purpose in doing it was, we have an actual sense of hunger in our bodies, uh, probably more than we should. <laughs> and uh, that natural sense of hunger was a clue to me, that, okay, just take a second with God right now. Just take a second to reconnect with God. And that's really the only, the only thing that I did it for, and that's what I got out of it, is a reminder all day long to take a moment with God during my work day. When I got hungry and I wanted to eat something, it was a point where I would just say, um, you know, God, give me strength right now. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with wanting to eat and wanting to break my commitment to you and wanting to do this. And, and, and then maybe I'd pray for somebody. I'd take those short moments all day long to try and reconnect. So that's really what that's really what it did for me and why I did it. And will I do it again? Probably, maybe in a different way. I also wanted to mention briefly the types of fasts I considered because I, I think it's important to realize we all can't do everything. 
And what works for one does not work for another. I travel a lot. I travel Monday through Thursday. So trying to do a shake and not eating all morning long. I don't have a blender in my hotel room. So <laughs> I was like, that's kind of difficult for me to do that one. So I had to find something that worked in my schedule and worked for me and the lifestyle that I had because of my job. So anyway, that's, that's really my experience with, uh, with fasting. And I hope I do it again. And it might not take the same form, but a little different form. Uh, it did uh, help me reconnect with God again. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. Uh, on a little lighter note, before I get into the whys and the hows of fasting, I'm just going to share a little bit about my first experience with fasting, which was a complete disaster. There's some good, good stories there, but uh, my first experience with, with any kind of fasting was when I was in seminary. And my first year, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and coming home for Thanksgiving, and so over uh, school closed down on Tuesday, there was no, there were no classes or food services closed on Wednesday and Thursday, and I thought, well, that, you know, what an opportunity to fast, I think I'll just fast over that time, and so I can remember that Tuesday night was my last meal, and then Wednesday there was no food available to me, and then Thursday came, and, you know, I was, I was hungry Wednesday, but boy, it hit and I remember about 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Thanksgiving going down to what was called a village just off campus, praying that something was open, I get something to eat, and there was nothing open. And all I had was a candy machine in the door, and uh, stuffing myself with candy bars. I didn't even have that much change, so it was a disaster. And I learned a lot of lessons from that. I, I bring that up because there are a lot of pitfalls to fasting. If you don't do it right, and especially the first time, uh, we may be turned off to it completely. So I wanted to share a couple of the whys, and, and both uh, Mike and Jeff kind of got into some of this, but I'm just going to go down the list of why, why did they fast in the Old Testament? Why did Jesus fast? Uh, why did John Wesley emphasize fasting? Why should we even think about fasting? And here are some of the, some of the reasons. Uh, first, uh, we fast to seek divine guidance. Uh, might mention that. Uh, there are times when we question where we're going in life, or we question a specific issue that's facing us. And in, in, uh, in the Bible, those, there were times when people set aside moments to fast and to pray in order to seek God's guidance. So one of the things we do, and, and it's amazing when you do fast, if you have ever kind of realize that at a certain point, your mind is very clear. And uh, so it's an opportunity to seek God's guidance. It's an act of self-denial. It's an act of saying, Lord, I'm willing to give something up. Jesus gave up his life for me. What am I willing to give up? And so self-denial. Another one is it's an act of identification. With the suffering of Jesus. Um, but most importantly, uh, the fourth thing is it's in order to focus on some act of obedience such as prayer. And I think both, both uh, uh, Mike and, and Jeff mentioned this. That if, if you're just fasting for the sake of fasting, if you're just fasting because it's a healthy thing to do or whatever, that's not, spirit, that's not a spiritual discipline. Uh, a spiritual discipline is setting aside something, whether it's food or something else, in order to focus on something. And, and most particularly, that would be prayer. So when Jesus fasted for 40 days, it wasn't, uh, he just didn't go off and do it to cleanse the system. He went off to focus on his relationship with God. And he spent that time in prayer and meditating and listening for God's voice. And then uh, the last thing I put down here for you have those notes is, but first and foremost, our purpose in fasting is God directed. We're directing ourselves to God. Fasting is done to do that, whatever kind of fasting that is. So what I want to talk a little bit more about right now is, is how we go about it. The first thing you need to do, if you, if you ever consider a fast, is consider the fact that there are many options out there. That was mentioned as well. Uh, Jeff mentioned that, that there are different ways to fast. For instance, John the Baptist fasted. Did you know that? He fasted his entire life that we know of. He ate locusts and wild honey. That was his diet. Uh, that, that was a fast, in a sense. Um, a specific kind of fast. Uh, some speculate that Jesus is 40 days in the wilderness. You know, when I first thought about fasting, I thought it meant no food, no water, nothing. And I thought, well, it's a miracle that Jesus would last 40 days. But the, it doesn't really say what kind of fast Jesus was on. 
He may well have been on a locust and a wild honey fast. Uh, he certainly drank water during those 40 days. So to think of a fast as strictly eliminating everything is wrong. In fact, in the Greek Orthodox, or in, in the Orthodox Church, not just the Greek, but all the Orthodox churches, they list five levels of fasting. Last week we talked about the first one, which is a meatless fast. I'm just going to go so long and, and in the Orthodox Church of Dream Lent, I'm going to go without meat. That's all I'm going to give up meat. Not just on Fridays, but every day. Uh, the second level is abstaining from meat, eggs, milk, butter, and cheese. Basically a vegan diet. Not taking anything that, that is produced by an animal. The third level was to abstain from meat, eggs, milk, butter, cheese, and fish. Eliminate the fish. The fourth one was to eliminate all those from the diet plus oil and maybe the hardest, wine. No wine. And then there was the fifth level, which was to abstain from all foods except bread, water, juices, honey, and nuts. So in none of those levels would say you go out go without anything. I think that's important to understand. A fast doesn't mean necessarily you don't eat anything. But you make a decision about what you're going to give up. You make a decision about the length of time that you're going to give that up. And most importantly, you make a decision about what you're going to do with that time that you have given up. So the first thing is you have to decide what kind of fast it's going to be. A word of caution, work up to it. That was my mistake. That's what I learned. I go in, it's like, you just don't go out and run a marathon because the night before you decide you're going to run a marathon. And you got to work up to it. And, and some, might, some people say, you know what, I, I want to do something really super spiritual, so I'm going go, to do a fast for a full seven days. I'm not going to eat anything for seven days. Uh, you don't do that. You need to work into it. And your body will help you work into it if you choose to do something like that. But you need to begin with small steps and begin that. So be careful that you don't go into it. Too much enthusiasm to start with. And then decide what you're going to do with your fast. If you're going to fast from something, whether it's from television, or whether it's from food, or whatever it might be, whatever, what are you going to do with, with that? What, what is the purpose of that? Make sure that it's God-directed. And you're just not giving up something. I, I often hear people say that for, for a Lent. Why well, I'm going to give up candy, or I'm going to give up pop. Why? There needs to be a reason behind it. If it's, if it's a spiritual discipline. Why are you giving that up? What are you going to do with your time? So here's some thoughts uh, from Scripture. And I'm going to share just a little bit about what I'm, what I'm doing right now. Uh, so closing thoughts. Fast is, fast is not for everyone. Okay? I think you've already heard that. John Wesley himself said, if you're fragile in health, if, if, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why you would not fast. If you're diabetic. If uh, I had a friend up north, so we were serving up there, he had a really bad back. He was on pain medication all the time. He had to eat all the time for, because of that pain medication. He could never fast. There are, there are some people who should never fast. So make sure, first of all, that you're healthy enough to do it if you're going to do any kind of fasting. And again, it might just determine what kind of fast you're going to be on. Um, sometimes you might even have to check with the doctor if you decide to do something. Um, secondly, don't be hypocritical about it. And thirdly, don't become legalistic about it. I'm going to share a few thoughts about what I'm going to be doing or what I have been doing during Lent. Um, and I'll get back to those two points in just a moment. Um, what I decided to do during Lent is to just try the Wednesday fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that means that on Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm going to uh, abstain from food until evening. Now, there's a couple reasons why I chose that. Uh, I thought about a meatless diet for the whole month. Uh, but one of the things I had to take into consideration is there are other people living in the house, and they may not appreciate that kind of diet. I have to work around that. A Wednesday, Friday night works very well because I'm alone during the day, and I don't have to worry about what I'm doing is affecting other people in my family. Uh, so I chose for that reason. I also did not eliminate water during that time because uh, I'm the one who doesn't like to drink water anyway, and so I'm, I'm always on the verge of being dehydrated, so I need to make sure I drink water. So I want to stay healthy. I want to be able to do this, but on the other hand, I didn't want to stay healthy. So I chose to do it um, in that fashion, and I did it this past week, and I survived. And one of the things you discover when you're fasting is you do get hungry. You, your, your body tells you you're hungry, and, and uh, I can't remember if it was Mike or Jeff who mentioned, but you know, every time you get hungry, like that, that's a that's an alarm clock going off in your mind. That's like the call of worship or the call of prayer that the Muslims have. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, I'm hungry. Why am I hungry? I'm, because I'm fasting. Why am I fasting? Stop and spend time with God. 
I've also found that it's kind of neat because in the morning when you get up, you know, I don't know how long it takes you to eat breakfast, but it usually takes me about 20 minutes. When I get up and realize I don't need to go potty with that day, I can just go right down to my office in my home and I can start writing on my devotions. And that doesn't mean I get done 20 minutes early. It means I've added 20 minutes to my time. That's 20 extra minutes. And when lunchtime comes, I don't have to worry about going home and fixing lunch. I can just stay right here and, and, and do some devotional work and just read the scripture and pray. I've got all that extra time that, that I don't normally have. Um, so that's been a blessing to me. There's a couple words of warning. I said don't become hypocritical about it and don't become legalistic. There's a couple Fridays during Lent when I've got some stuff going on. I've got a class in a couple weeks up at Wasika, and they're going to have box lunches for everybody. And I'm going to make a decision. Now, I can just sit back at the time and say, I'm sorry, folks, but I'm fasting. You know, look at me. Um, but, you know, I don't want to do that. I, I, I'll, just, I'll just eat with everybody else. I'm not going to make a big deal on fasting. Maybe I'll fast on Saturday instead. Maybe I won't. We've got, we've got that Haitian meal coming up this year. We're going to be going up, and, and uh, our Haiti mission team is going to meet, and we're going to do a meal on Friday. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to. so easy to let that happen. I don't fast because I have to. I, I don't fast because I want it to become a rigid, uh, legalistic discipline. I fast because I want it to be meaningful and helpful in my spiritual life. And so there will be some days, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fast that day. I don't, I'd like to try to do it every Wednesday and Friday, but I'm not going to get so stuck that I have to do it, that, that I miss uh, other things. And, and Jesus warned against that, warned against being hypocritical. So, I just want to suggest today that some of you may want, uh, as one of the tools, again, we're going to talk about another one next week, but um, just want to suggest that maybe this is a tool that you'd like to try. And again, there are many different ways, there are many different levels of, of fasting, and if you want some more help on that, I'm certainly willing to, to sit down and talk with you and, and help you with that. But uh, again, consider and think about the possibility, not just during Lent, but on into the rest of the year, what role this discipline might be for you, what, what opportunities it might give to you, and how you might use this tool. Um, again, it's not for everybody, and uh, I wouldn't do it unless I really felt called I got to do it, and I would not do it unless I really was directing myself towards God and using this as an opportunity to grow in my life with God. So, take that for what it's worth. It's one of the tools. Next week, we're going to talk about, I think, it's silence and solitude next week. And uh, we'll continue the series about the spiritual disciplines. But right now, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the various disciplines that you've given to us and the opportunities that you've given us to use them uh, in order to grow in our relationship with you. We pray that you would just help us now as we go forth, if, if we should choose to... Um, Use such a discipline. We pray that you would help us to um, to be able to use that for your glory. And uh, so we just again pray and thank you for for your witness to the spiritual discipline of fasting. And we pray that you would just guide and direct us in the ways that you would have us to use it, if at all. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now we invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 530.